Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Tuesday. It's January 2nd. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and welcome back to 2024 and start a new year. We um, doesn't look like I missed a whole lot. Uh, prices pushed slightly higher while I was out, but have really taken most of that back. We're really about where we were when I left out again. So uh, not much happened while I was gone. That's why I usually take those last two weeks because there's just not much. You can see there's not much. I, and that's pretty typical of what might happen. The market just kind of works sideways. Uh, if it, I mean, actually, I'm surprised we had that much movement, to be honest with you. But um, we're really back to scratch where we started when I left. So... Um, I'd usually recommend most people take those days off. The volume can be low and be a lot of uh, mixed trading and so forth. It looks like we had a pretty good down, a couple of up days and a pretty good down day and another up day. So there might have been some good trading days in there. I haven't really even looked at it, but um, uh, I recommend taking those days off. So, But we've just been working sideways really for the past couple of weeks. You can see that here. Uh, I like we were going to have a pretty bearish day today, but they keep they keep clawing back some of it at the end of every day, and um, so we'll see if they where we go tomorrow. My guess is we sh we're way overdue to come back to at least the mid lot here, so I wouldn't be surprised if we don't get some more down movement. Um, a lot of craziness going on, a lot of negative news out there still. So we still could see a sell off here. Who knows? Uh, as long as this thing's Continue to push higher. Don't argue with it. Go with it. Take whatever the day gives you. If you get a big down day, of course, trade it down. And if you get a big up day, just trade it up. Just be. Uh, just make sure you use your safety stops in case something crazy happens. Uh, the war drums continue to beat all over the world. Um, the economy is still up in the air here in the U.S., uh, the dollar, uh, the dollar is the big deal lately, and that might be, could be a catalyst to, to a, a market sell off. Um, the rest of the world is kind of getting together and deciding they're not going to use the dollar as their main currency anymore, especially when they're purchasing and, and selling oil. And that's a big deal. Uh, you know, if they get enough people to participate in that, uh, could really, that can really affect the dollar and send it lower which would could really affect the market. So just be on your P's and Q's. I'm not saying anything's going to happen. I'm not saying anything won't happen either. Um, it's just a lot of uncertainty. So you don't know what's going to happen. So, um, I mean, you can you see you have a big up day and then a huge down day and then a big up day and then a couple more down days. So you just don't know what's going to, what the market's going to do. Just let the price action show you. Whatever it gives you, follow it. And uh, don't argue with it. And just keep your stops in there. Make sure you're always trading with your stops, following the rules, put it underneath or above your signal bar so that if something crazy does happen, the least you do is you have a losing trade and you lose you lose a couple of points, three, a couple of three points at the most, even if you get some slippage in there. If you're following the rules, you can't lose too much. So, uh, But that's the problem. A lot of people will trade and they'll move their stops and they'll give the market more room, just don't do that because eventually it will come back and bite you. That's the one thing I can guarantee you. So but anyway, relatively bearish day. We did recover some of it. Again, it was after 2.30 going into the close. Otherwise, it was mostly down. Most of this sell-off came in the overnight, and then we just really kind of chopped sideways in the daytime. So um, it really was a mostly sideways market that closed back inside the range. But let's flip over to the 2000 tick chart and you can take a look at it and see what I'm talking about. Okay, here we are. You can see we had this big sell-off during the overnight. Just as the market opened, we, we rallied a little bit before selling off. And you can see we did get a break here and a new low right away. And then we just chopped sideways. Uh, we broke out up here but failed, ran to a new low, broke out down here, failed, Traded back up, but really closed back inside, still inside the range. So not a lot of trades, especially in the afternoon. Uh, there was there were a few setups before about 11 o'clock, and then after that, there really wasn't much of anything. There's a couple of greens in there. 
so just wasn't a very good trading. There's a pretty good sell-off here, but there's just no setups to get in it that are safe. So there's no trades out there that I have marked. And, uh, you know, you just can't argue with the market. Uh, it's probably obvious we were going lower here, but you still have to follow the rules and wait on a good setup to make sure you don't get burned. And we just never got one. And so you didn't have much option. But let's zoom in here. We'll go through the trades. The few there are. It won't take long today. I'm really late getting this up. It's it's almost 7 o'clock, and I'm just now getting to this. Um, I'm so far behind from being gone two weeks. Uh, I really had little, ac little to no access to my email. So um, you can imagine what my email inbox looks like. And I'm just trying to catch up. And just bear with me. It'll take me a day or two to catch up, and then we'll kind of get back on track here. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at anything in the forum either, so maybe a couple more days before I can get to that. I need to get everything else caught up first. But uh, 7 o'clock came just as we bottomed out here. And this really looks like a triple test almost here. There's not much space in there between these two. Uh, and this looks really congested, and we're still in this downtrend. In the end, it could just be one channel here with a break and a new low. But even so, we still got a break of this and two legs down to a new low before it rallied. So, so it looks correct, but there's just, you know, we never went any lower there other than the, for the retest. So there's just not much you can enter here until you finally get the early, early on. I had the range right here, but you can see it's, it just kind of doubled. This was really a midline in here. Um, and so this is the first turn off the measured move up. Um, it's a little questionable. I mean, you would expect prices to try to retest this low on a, on a sell-off like that. And you might even get some an, another flatter downtrend. So this is a reasonable risk, but it is risky, so I marked it green. Somebody sent me a, this trade and actually took it today and wanted to know what I thought about it. I think it's a little risky. I think you... you when you look at this, you you assume prices are going to go lower here. Uh, the odds are very high. Uh, but if you didn't take this, by the time you got your lower high here, it's just too congested. So definitely don't take that because you see you would have got burned. Uh, if you're going to enter, you have to enter here on this breakout. Uh, you did make a new high here, although it does turn down right at the EMA. Uh, there's a good chance you'll get a scalp out of that, which you would have. So maybe you take that. I, I still made it green. And, of course, we come down here and we test this again. We do make a new low on the khaki channel. But there's clearly a triple test now with a pretty good signal bar. And so I like just trying to ride that back to the EMA, the top of the range, see what happens. And that could be the low for the day. So that's another reason I kind of like that one. I mean, if it had made a, a if it had closed lower down here, I'd probably told you to wait for a, a, a higher low. But because it closes and never closes back inside the range and none of the bodies outside of the, the support level, I think you're safe probably trying to take that one right away. Uh, up here, you can see there's another one made a new high. And it's a second entry, too, and it would have worked. But notice how this one closes outside the original range. And so it's a little more risky, even though it's a second. Actually, it's a third entry. I see a first entry, a second entry. And so that would be a... Let me zoom in here a little more. Notice you got a first entry here, second entry there. So that's the third entry. So, but if you drew your trend line, which you could have, you can see there is a close outside a new high. I just think that one's really risky, especially. Uh, it looks fairly bearish. You're just not that far away from the EMA. There's not much room back to the support resistance, and we already bounced there a couple of times. So if it bounced there again, you might even be thinking go long, but it didn't. It, it closed back inside and then turned up in one hour. Of course, draw this trend line. And then you get a first entry and a lower eye when it breaks out. That's the second entry. I like that. It confirms the trend line. Second entry long. We haven't moved a measured move um, really yet. So uh, there's a good chance we go higher here. And we're just chopping just two sideways, too much congestion, no entry there. Same thing here, we run back down, just sideways. Signal bar is not good enough here. You get a failed breakout. 
this one's tempting, but look at that congestion. Uh, you figure it's because we're finding support down here, but you don't have much proof of that yet. So uh, I'd sit tight on that. Uh, you do get a lower high here, but that's we moved way too far. This is just really a, a, looks like a new uh, it's like a new trend coming up. You can't really consider that a lower high. So it's just a first entry, and then there's a second entry there. It fails. Uh, of course, you don't want to go low, short into that support anyway. But then you get a triple test with a failed second entry short, and it's also a first entry, second entry long. Um, I like that. When I marked it green, it looks a little congested here. But again, you have to figure that's because there's support here. Now we got some evidence that we're finding support here. So I like that one. I still marked it green. It's real close. Um, you might argue for it to be right there between green and blue. But um, I still think it's uh, I think it's, it's a little aggressive because there's not a lot of room back to the EMA there. <clears throat> so we could still be in a downtrend overall here. We could be setting up um, a new trend working lower here. Turns out we're not. We just bounce and go higher. And we don't quite get back up to the highs here. And then we're just chopping sideways. Uh, there is a failed second entry long here. Notice the new high, first entry, second entry. There's also a new low right here. So first entry, second entry. So it's a second entry short, failed second entry long. Um, nice signal bar. You're expecting a retest of the low here. Maybe go all the way down to here. So I like entering that one. Uh, you're just kind of playing the range as well. It looks like it's setting up as a range. You don't quite have enough evidence there yet to know if it's a range or not. But regardless, you still got room to get out before here. So uh, nice move down. And we're just kind of chopping sideways. It comes back. There's a triple test here. Um, which you could have taken it. I didn't mark it because it's, it looks more like a doji. It's not bearish enough, in my opinion. It's another one you could argue to be green. And if you catch that one, then you probably catch this move. But this is a little aggressive, in my opinion. It's right into the uh, midline. Uh, the main midline is right into the midline of the tighter range here. It is a triple test, and there is room to get out. It's just not a great signal bar, in my opinion, to be sitting where it's sitting. And you see it did bounce back. It didn't make a new high, though, so you would have survived it. Uh, a lot of people would let that scare them out, and they would scratch the trade anyway and probably end up taking a loss. So it's just probably not a great trade to enter. If you took it, I wouldn't beat you up over it. Um, it is a triple test. One, two, three. And... You know, you could argue it's a second entry short, which we're not really looking for second entries in here. They'll chop you up trying to look for them. But if you see one and everything else kind of lines up and you get other reasons to enter, sometimes you want to pay attention to that. But it would have turned out to be a great trade. It's just not a great setup. And then we come down and we fell out the bottom, but that's the, your signal bar is the big bearish bar there. You can't enter on that. You get a higher low here, same thing, another inside, it's, it's an inside bar, runs up. Um, it's just a first entry there. Anyway, your signal bar is here. And then you're just chopping sideways again. Um, we do bounce down here, but that's just too much congestion. And we're just running along here. You can see how congested that is. I'm not crazy about it. Finally, you do... Get a failed second entry short, and also it's a first entry, second entry long. So maybe you take that trade. There's still room to get out. The problem is there's not much room here, but it does confirm this trend line right here. Um, it is a second entry. It is a failure. Uh, you don't really look for failures in this instance and in this location, but when you're, when you're seeing everything else together, it's just another reason to maybe – consider it so may so I, I like that trade just because it's coming back to the trend line more than anything and bouncing again and giving you multiple reasons to enter again this is not really where you're looking for a failure uh, it's not a reversal this would be a continuation type pattern and we're so close to the highs you're not really looking for that there but it was a second entry and because it was a second entry it does confirm the trend line it is a great signal bar um,
I tend to like it. It's real close to being green. You could argue this one to be green, honestly. Um, I liked it in real time, but now that I'm looking back at it, there's there's some reason to be concerned about that. But it probably ought to be green. It's real close. You could argue it either way. Runs up. We do get a breakout, so you you know this trend line is in play. I want to say somebody went short. Somebody sent me a trade and went short in here. And this is not a kind of place you'd want to be going short. Um, it's too sideways, really. Um, maybe they went short here, but you, you know you're still making higher highs and higher lows. But I'm thinking they went short right in here, and that's just really congested. Um, there's a lower high here, but you can see you're back inside the support, and you're right at it there. So there's no shorts in here and no longs in here. Uh, but I think this person actually went long up here is what I have. I think they went long right here, if I remember right. Um, and there's no entry there. Maybe it was both. Maybe somebody did go short and somebody did go long there. You would expect this to fail, but you don't know that this pattern won't win out the new uptrend. And so you got to be careful getting long. I don't see any longs in here either, but I don't see any real short. I don't see either. I don't, I don't like entering either way. You just need to sit tight. And, of course, we break higher here and break out of this again and fail, and it really sells off. Now, you might like this one. It actually breaks higher and fails and turns down. Um, I don't know that I'd go short at the very low here, that far away from the EMA. But when it broke higher and failed, you could go short below that on the engulfing bar, one tick below this this bullish bar here, because it's probably going to act as a trap. And you can see how it ran down pretty quickly, and uh, then it came back and tested this uh, a few more times before you finally get a triple test with a big bearish bar. This is not a great entry, but when it couldn't go higher three times, actually it's more than three times, but you get a clear three test in there. With that big bearish bar, I think you could get a short out of that, and it's probably heading at least down to the test the midline again. And this is actually played out too, because you get a break and two legs up. It actually tries three times. So I marked it green. It's a little aggressive, and then there's nothing else in there you can really enter short on. There's you probably could argue there's a triple test here, but the signal bar is no good. You can't go short right here into the support, and you can't go long until this is at least played out. So I just don't see anything there. And then next thing you know, we're into 2.30. Um, we never came back to this trend line until after 2.30. So you couldn't really go long in here. Um, and I don't see any shorts that or I'd be willing to take there either. There's a second entry short right here, but the signal bar is no good. Uh, there is a lower high here. Uh, but you see what would have happened if you took it that late in the day. It's just it's just not a great setup either. Um, technically, it's a first, second, third. It's like a fourth entry short, so it's just not really a place you want to go short. We're making higher highs and higher lows still. So I'd want to see something better than that. I'd really want to see this something set up up here after it retested. Notice when we came through, we never tested anything. So this thing is most likely trying to work its way back up and test the breakout area. Because that's what prices do. They, they push through. Normally they won't go this far before they come back and try to test it. Normally they'll come back and test it pretty quickly. But there was a lot of selling here. And then once that selling dried up, it didn't even really test this. It just shot straight through it and right up. I mean, this is one another one of those late, almost into 3 o'clock rallies. Nobody wants to carry this thing short. I think the path of least resistance is down, but nobody wants to short this market because it just keeps going higher. And so I think that's a lot of the problem is nobody wants to carry this thing short in the overnight. So they start taking profits, and the next thing that starts rallying, and then People start more profit taking comes in, then the three o'clock exit comes in, and next thing you know, you've done run back up multiple points. Okay, not much else you can say about today. 
I had a little interruption there, and I, I think we went through, you know, we finished all the trades when we were talking about this rally here. But um, we'll see what tomorrow brings. Will we get a route, another rally day or continue the sell-off? Uh, we'll just have to see. We could get an attempt at a measured leg down like this. We certainly didn't get it today. That's probably the low right there, and then there's the high. So doesn't look like we didn't make a new high here, though. Usually we'll make a new high, but we could push on down and try to make a measured move. We could continue. We could. I mean, who knows what tomorrow will bring? The way this thing's been lately, that's just something to look at. We did feel the gap today. I forgot to talk about that. The gap was here. There was two gaps. There was the gap here. Then there was the uh, where we closed versus where we opened at 830. So we had a gap between uh, the yellow line and here as well. We were only able to fill this one, uh, which is the more important one. I think we filled it. Let me just make sure we filled it. I'm pretty sure we did. Yep. And you can see that's exactly where we got to. To fill that gap, if you look across there, you can see, and then that's when we turned down again. So that would, that was, like I said, that was our first target. And if we continued higher again, I would have used this one, the red line, for your next target. But if it turns down here and starts trending down hard, then you know we're probably going to try to go lower and maybe make another measured leg like that, which we didn't quite do. So, but that's how I was looking at it today. So pay attention to these gaps. I'll usually point them out to you. Um, if they're there. So, anyway, that's going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow, starting out our new year here. I hope you had a great um, Christmas holiday and uh, New Year's, and I uh, hope you have a blessed and happy New Year, and that um, if you're not profitable with your trading yet, that this is the year that will happen for you. Um, it's, it's, it takes a lot of hard work and study. But it is, it is achievable if you follow the rules and, and just follow along and do what we teach you to do. It's not as hard as you think it is. It's, it's, the problem is most people have unrealistic expectations and they don't understand. The big thing is you just need the experience and the screen time to get used to what all the different things that prices do. And that's what really takes so long. Um, so just remember that this is a skill. And how do you get better at a skill? Through practice and repetition. And that's what it takes a lot of, practice and repetition. So never lose sight of that. But anyway, um, we'll look forward to a, another year, starting out a new year here. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, hope you had a good day today. There wasn't a lot of opportunities today, but hopefully um, you're learning that that's when you need to be patient and disciplined. And if there's not a trade, you can't take one. And that's another part of the learning curve that you have to conquer. So um, keep working on it if you were if you weren't able to do it today. So, but anyway, we'll be back tomorrow. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you.